the latest on Yellowstone supervolcano. The national park has been rocked by more than 100 earthquakes in the past 28 days. It's got deformation, it's got movement. Does that mean it's going to erupt? Sean Martin Express UK reports the national park rocked by more than 100 earthquakes in 28 days. Is this a sign? The supervolcano is about to blow. It's in Wyoming, Montana and Idaho, and struck by 105 tremors in the park alone, another that much in uh, northwest in uh, Montana, in just 28 days. And according to U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, this means there has been an average of almost four earthquakes a day. Some scientists are concerned that a plethora of earthquakes could be a sign of a major eruption, Tremors themselves have been relatively unalarming, the biggest of the tremors registering 2.9 Richter, which was October 1st, but some geologists argue that it's not the size of the earthquakes that's important, but the uh, frequency, which are used to forecast the eruption. And uh, it's the quantity of tremors, how many there are. Portland State University geology professor Emeritus Scott Burns lately said a spat of small earthquakes around a volcano could be a sign that magma and gases beneath the surface are beginning to navigate and exit. Well, we know also the fact that we've had a very strong earthquake in Ridgecrest, the 6.4 July 4th, 7.1 July 5th. We had the 7.1 earthquake again in Ridgecrest 20 years ago, and we had an earthquake swarm at Yellowstone supervolcano and another earthquake over in another supervolcano in California, the Long Valley Caldera. So it's to be expected even this time with the 7.1 magnitude earthquake and the, the, the continuous quake activity there that they have jostled these two supervolcanoes as well. Long Valley Caldera and Yellowstone. If you take a look at the video before this one, it takes a look at the uh, quakes of Long Valley over 1,150 in the past 28 days, and um, that's quite a lot, as you can understand. There is a geothermal plant, uh, Casa Diablo is there, is there, also a geothermal plant in Ridgecrest, another geothermal plant in uh, Salton Buttes. Um, the one in uh, Long Valley supplies 40,000 homes, but um, there's also movement there. It's deforming, it's, it's rising, and it's going northwest. Uh, it's traveling northwest, but um, it's expected because the 7.1 in Ridgecrest was a very large uh, earthquake. Now, um, Portland State University Emeritus Professor Scott Burns said the spat of small earthquakes could be a sign magma and gases under there are beginning to exit. He said if you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that the magma is moving up underneath there, but others disagree about him, about whether an earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Uh, Jamie Farrell of the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, he believes that this is just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone. He's saying earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There's no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. As we know, the last super eruption at Yellowstone was uh, in Wyoming was 640,000 years ago. Actually, it was a double eruption, and then another um, quake, 140, uh, another eruption 170 years later. But we've had many eruptions since then. Another, it was in the, the 130,000 years ago, 110,000 years ago, a lava eruption uh, 70,000 years ago, and since that 70,000 year eruption. We've had another 80 eruptions, which were more minor, of course, than a super eruption. Basically, every 6,000 years, Yellowstone erupts somehow. Now, according to the United States Geological Survey, the chances of a Yellowstone eruption is about 1 in 730,000, with 640,000 years having passed since the last major eruption. Yellowstone is edging closer to exploding, but it could still be many thousands of years away, but experts are preparing for the worst right now and studying how a major eruption, which could instantly wipe out 
large swaths of the U.S. could be prevented. One NASA employee believes he has found a unique way to stop the major eruption, and that's by feeding cold water into Yellowstone's magma chambers. NASA engineer Brian Wilcox has the ideas and hopes to stave off the threat of a super eruption and that is to cool down the magma in the chambers inside the volcano. Around 60 to 70 percent of the heat generated by Yellowstone seeps into the atmosphere but the remainder builds up inside and if enough builds up it can trigger an eruption. And he says that uh, his idea is by drilling 10 kilometers into Yellowstone, which is about six miles down, which is really, really bad because the magma chamber is only three miles from the surface. So you may end up drilling into the magma chamber. Or if you're drilling, you may even crack up the roof of the magma chamber, which is really bad news. You're trying to, uh, you may end up bringing up the, the super eruption faster than it would take to come up. Now, NASA employees believe it would be possible to pump high pressure water, which will allow the cooling liquid to absorb some of the heat before it's pumped out again. Wilcox told journalist Brian Walsh in, a late, uh, in uh, the, letters, the latter's new book, End Times, that the plan could cost $3.5 billion, and it would have to uh, have the added benefit of using the steam from the water and the magma combo to create carbon-free geothermal electricity at a much cheaper rate than any alternative energy current available on the market. Wilcox told Walsh, the thing that makes Yellowstone a force of nature is that it stores up heat for hundreds of thousands of years before it all goes kabooey all at once. And he says it would be good if we drained away the heat before it could do a lot of damage Others, though, are not so convinced about the feasibility of Wilcox ideas. U.S. scientist Jake Lowenstern told Walsh it all seems a bit fanciful. And, of course, the geologist in charge of Yellowstone, Mike Poland, thank goodness, tells him no one's going to touch Yellowstone. No one is going to do anything to Yellowstone. So, you know, uh, thank goodness. He uh, believes that, so he's in charge of Yellowstone, he can't uh, allow anyone to touch it because you may end up bringing about what you're trying to stop. All right, uh, I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. Also, please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications because a lot of people are telling me that they've getting, they're getting unsubscribed for some reason and uh, they're not getting my notifications, so please be sure you are subscribed and ring the bell at the bottom of the video on the right hand side in the description box you can get the latest videos. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.